We are going to look at quadratics that we thought we couldn't solve and that were not factorable. And we are going to find solutions for them. The answers that we're going to get aren't always going to be whole numbers. They might be decimals. They might be a square, have a square root in them. And if they have a square root in them, that means that you would need a calculator to actually get the decimal answer. So the quadratic formula helps us factor equations that we can't do just by looking at it and thinking about it. Or if the numbers are like really large, that also is something, this is an alternative. So this whole chapter, I'm teaching you different ways to find the two solutions, x equals what and x equals what. Today is the quadratic formula. There's also a method called completing the square. If you don't want to use quadratic formula, you have another option still. So there's a lot um, in this chapter that's going to be helpful. So first of all, why do we even need to use the quadratic equation? Or why do we even need to use the quadratic formula? Okay. I actually kind of just said it. Why do we need this? Why am I giving you this today? Because why? Why are you learning this formula that has a song to it? To so say it again? Ooh, I like something I heard. Okay, so this is a method that you can use to find your x equals what and x equals what. It's just a different technique, different way to do it. So here is our factored in blue, ax squared plus bx plus c. But you guys know that the a is a number, the b is a number, the c is a number. a sometimes is 1, right? Like look on bell work number 1. A was 1, 1x one squared. But I don't write 1 because that's a waste of our time. Okay? So A, B, and C are the numbers that we use to plug into the quadratic, for, quadratic formula. Quadratic. So the song, Pop Goes the Weasel. X equals negative B plus or minus the square root of B squared minus 4AC all over 2A. And the easiest way to memorize it is to learn the song. Okay? So the song starts out with, the song doesn't start negative B plus X equals. That's the beginning of the song. So I'm going to sing it again. I'd love to have you join in or in your head or whatever. If you're shy, here we go. X equals negative B plus or minus the square root of B squared minus 4AC all over to Woohoo! Choir class, here we go. All right. Let's go again. One more time. Again. No. Please? You're good. So, because every single problem, I'm going to use the tune. Don't worry, you'll hear it a lot. So, I have actually, we're actually just going to example one right now. I have put the quadratic formula on top of every single slide because I think that it's a great reference to have there. Somewhere on your notes, can you please write down the quadratic formula? Go. Somewhere on your notes, because you're going to need it for reference. Okay, so here's what's going to happen. I know it's on your paper probably by now. What's going to happen is that we are going to focus on A and B and C. A equals 2. B equals negative 3. C equals negative 6. Those are the three numbers that we're going to use. It always has to be in ax squared plus bx plus c order. And it has to equal zero. So here we go. We're going to go really slow. And I always kind of like hum it or sing it while I'm plugging in the numbers. 
So, here we go. Oh, let's do blue. X equals negative, so negative 3, right? Plus or minus, because I'm going to end up getting two answers, a plus answer and then the minus answer. This, um, the square root of b squared, negative 3 squared, minus 4 times 2 times negative 6, all over 2 times a, 2, 2 times 2. Okay. So, and you just simplify. Obviously, a negative times a negative 3, 3, plus or minus. Okay, now, ideally, in a perfect world, we would get a wonderful number underneath that square root. Sometimes you get it, sometimes you don't. So let's see what we get here. 9, be careful with the multiplication, 4ac. Negative 4 times 2 times negative 6. Negative 4 times 2, negative 8. Negative 8 times negative 6. Positive 48. All over 4. <laughs> okay, what is 9 plus 48? Fifty-seven. Can you break down fifty-seven? Three plus or minus the square root of fifty-seven all over four. Is there any perfect squares in fifty-seven? Yeah. Well, three goes into fifty-seven. Yep, three goes into fifty-seven. So let's just see. Oh, but nineteen. That's not. That's lame. That's not going to work. Okay. So actually, your answer is done. Now let me get a calculator. So if you truly, truly cared, I will happily have you leave your answer just like this. Because basically what it means is you're going to have two answers. 3 plus radical 57 divided by 4. And 3 minus radical 57 divided by 4. Okay? Now, let me do radical 57 on my calculator. Okay, it's obviously a long number. It's a number that goes on forever after the decimal point. So it is 7.54983444, but let's just go to two spaces. 7.55 would be, so here is my, this is the math that you would do. 3 plus 7.55 divided by 4. 3 minus 7.55 divided by 4. So I'm going to do 3 plus 7.55. You could do that in your head probably. Anyways, 10.55 divided by 4. Okay, 2.6. That's where my parabola would cross the x-axis at 2.6, like a little past 2. And it would also cross at 3 minus 7.55, negative, negative 4.55 divided by 4. Negative 1.13. Okay. So on a graph, let me press pause. So our job with this lesson is just practicing plugging in. So you're actually going to be plugging in for A and B and C often. Okay, both of them are back. Er, that's good. Here we go. First job, identify what's A, what's B, what's C. A is 1, B is negative 2, C is, okay, all right, so gentlemen that just joined us, here's what we're doing, we're using this formula up here, and we are going to plug in 
numbers instead of A, B, and C? X equals negative, negative 2, plus or minus the square root of negative 2 squared, minus 4 times 1 times negative 5, all over 2 times 1. Okay. Oh, negative, negative 2, right off the bat. Change that to a positive 2. Before you write down the math inside, do it. Negative 2 squared, 4. Okay, negative 4 times 1 times negative 5. Negative 4 times 1 times negative 5. Plus 20, I heard that, that is right. <laughs> All over 2. 2, whatever. I'm running out of space, so I'm going to do it to the side. 2 plus or minus the square root of 24 all over 2. <gasps> break it down. How do I break down this 24? We've done it so many times. Tell me the answer, though. 2 rad 6. Now, all of the numbers... All of the numbers that are not inside the square root, so the 6, ignore the 6. Pretend the 6 isn't there for right now. Because here's what you can do. This 2 can be divided into this 2. And this 2 can be divided into this 2. So this 2 is going to do two purposes right now. It's going to reduce the numerator numbers. Don't touch the 6. Don't touch the 6. No, 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 no. So... I can reduce 2 goes into 2 once. 2 goes into this 2 once. 2 goes into itself once. So what I basically did is I just reduced all those 2s. And you'll get that. Like there'll be a number at the bottom that can simplify into the top. And you're like, great. But don't touch what's under the square root. Don't touch the 6. Here's my answer. And again, you'd really need a calculator. 1 plus 1 rad 6 over 1. Do I need to be putting, which ones do I not need to put? Where? Be, be specific with me right now. The one on the bottom I don't need to put. Where else? Good job. X equals 1 plus rad 6. What's my minus version? You're super smart. I know. Here's what it looked like before. Okay? I cannot go any further. I'm done. I'm not going to get on my calculator for every single problem. I don't want you to do that. Please don't. So, moving along. Do you think you could do this one by yourself? You could help, get help from the people near you. Try it. Turn the page, go to number one. Okay. What's wrong? Oh. Isn't it positive one? Where? Because it's already a negative B. Negative B. And then it's a negative one. Negative B. B is positive one. Right? Tell me right here. No. Wouldn't the one be positive? Right here? No. Why? Negative. Two A. A is negative one. Negative two. X equals negative B. So negative and then whatever B is. B is a positive number. So negative one. All right. Those are my. You know what, you guys? Guess what? Can I show you something that you're going to probably be irritated by? 
Would you like to get irritated right now? Yes. You don't want to see me irritated. Okay. If I, I'm going to do this in purple over on the side. If I factored out a negative 1 for my answer, from my original, you know what I mean? I could have factored it. No way. No way. No way. I'm so mad. Okay, what would my signs be though? Because remember, so. Did all that I know, I know. This I'm so irritated. But <laughs> <laughs> this one actually ended up being factorable. Wow. Um, no, you write your two answers. X equals negative 5 and X equals 6. And this is an alternative. So sometimes you will get whole number answers. Sometimes you will get square root answers. I do not want you to get on your calculator and to worry about the decimal answers, okay? Okay, but the whole point of today's lesson is to practice the quadratic formula. We're done factoring the normal way. That's the whole point of this lesson. Now, A is 3, guys. This is different. All right, plug in, go. X equals negative 7 plus or minus the square root of 7 squared minus 4 times 3 times negative 20. Ah, that's big. All over 2 times 3. Yeah. Sure. But I need you to know how to do this. Negative 7 plus or minus. Wow. These numbers, crazy. 49. Plus 60. No, bigger than 60. Plus 240. Now it's 12 times 20. Right? Yeah, 240. Oh. It's 240. Um, uh, good news, 289 is a perfect square. Anyone care to indulge me? Nope, 6 times 6 ends in a 6. Anyone? 17. 7 times 7 ends in a 9. <laughs> Okay, so plus version minus version, yeah? No, you don't want to separate them until you've added them. You have to add them first. Um, 10 over 6, which reduces to 5 over 3. One and one third, because you know we have to have our mixed numbers x intercepts. Uh, negative twenty four. Okay. My x intercepts, my roots, my solutions, my x's are one and one third and negative four. It's a lot of work. But if something's not factorable, you need to be able to get your answers even though. So this is why we have an alternative method. Okay, 225 is a perfect square. Okay, 
So you have to do your 15, your plus 15, and then your minus 15. Okay. Uh, 14 over negative 8, negative 16 over negative 8. Um, are we good? What's the hardest part about the quadratic formula? It takes a long time. Okay. Is the math difficult? No? Okay. All right, do not move on. We're going to go on right now, and we're going to um, do some practice. Turn, turn the page. We are finished with the video.